Okay, it's six o'clock. We'll call the committee of the whole to order. If the clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Hockey? Here. Mr. Jones? Mr. March? Here. Mr. Pam? Here. Mr. Bowden? Here. Mr. Hack? Here. In your packets, we have the minutes of the July 24th, 2017 Committee of the Whole Meeting. Are there any addition or corrections to those minutes? If not, a motion to accept is presented. So moved. Second? I'll second. Motion by Trustee March, seconded by Trustee Hand. Mr. March? Yes. Mr. Ham? Yes. Mr. Bowden? Yes. Mr. Hack? Present. Mr. Huffy? Present. Yes. <laughs> All right, we will move on to public comment. Um, tonight, I've asked uh, Mr. Paul Ratchie to be here. You can step up, Paul. Um, just to give you guys a little background, I'll let you fill it in, Paul, from there. Um, on Wood Street, at the end of Wood Street, which is a dead end street, it dead ends down toward behind uh, the mill, okay, there is a house uh, which the Ratchies own and that's for sale. This house is zone B2 currently. Okay, so it's kind of the opposite of the house that we talked about a couple months ago over by the bank where, you know, it's in a commercial district. This is a house in a truly, clearly residential district that is zone B2. And I think really the only reason it probably is is that's where Kenny Kinnickram had his uh, trucking um, thing back in the day when he owned his trucking firm. He parked trucks down there. So I'm sure that's why that was zoned B2. So we're kind of in a current situation where... Richard Groom. Okay. Uh, is attempting to buy the house and the lender is asking for a letter stating, you know, if it burns down, you know, they'll be allowed to rebuild it. I don't have a, personally, I don't have a problem giving that letter, but I expressed to Paul that I thought it would just be a good idea to go ahead and pursue just rezoning that, you know, to the, the residential zoning. But to go ahead and give them a letter now so they can move forward with their closing with the understanding that they'll pursue uh, the rezoning to a residential zoning. And I don't have much to add. And, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that we're getting close to the closing. And I mean, the hope is we don't have to hold the buyer up and can follow through with the intention that, yes, it, you know, we'll go through with the rezoning process and uh, get it zoned the right, to the right residential. I said, I don't know if you're familiar with what I'm, where I'm talking, but there's absolutely no other commercial, you know, there at dead ends, and that street will never, never go through. Hmm. What's holding up the request for rezoning? Nothing. We haven't, we haven't gone through with the process yet. We put it up for sale, and we have a buyer, and in the course of going through everything, the buyer's lender saw that it was zoned business. Mm -hmm. So they were concerned that if, for some reason the house burned down or something, the village would not let them rebuild a single family residence on the business property. So we're getting close to the closing. The lender said they would be okay if the village provided a letter saying that the village is okay that if something did happen to the house, you would allow them to rebuild the house on the business property. But in the interim, we will go through and, and get it zoned. So I mean, hopefully nothing happens, it gets zoned residential. Right, and, and I don't, I mean, I don't see any anything from planning and zoning that would you know hold up getting it changed but I'm just trying not to hold up the purchase so if we provide them the letter in the meantime <clears throat> with the understanding that we'll go through the rezoning process but to rezone it it's got to go through planning and zoning the neighbors have to be notified you know by certified mail that whole that whole process and then hold the, the planning and zoning meeting and then bring it back to the board and that's going to take six weeks, yeah. I mean, something like that. I mean, I know you can't predict the outcome, but I would like to think that, I can't speak for all of you or the neighbors necessarily. Right. I've talked to the guy next door a little bit, but I don't know why anybody would oppose having a residential versus what could be there if it was a business. How many more properties are like that? I really don't know. <coughs> I mean, there, there can't be. You got some spots. <laughs> I personally don't have a problem with it. I, I'm like you. I think it was just for Kenny's excavating company, and 
it, I think it benefits everybody to get it rezoned because we don't want a business down right. there. Right, exactly. I say it's the direct opposite of mm -hmm. the house that we were looking at across from the bank, where that's, I can see that being more commercial in the future. <coughs> this I mean, should be. This it should it be. wasn't much to the west of that anyway. Right. Other, you know, the meadows had started, but there was nothing there except farmland. Right. So. Any Who, who's going to be requesting this rezoning? The village or no, no, not the village. The I think we'll talk. About it. Are you going to request? I it? think yeah. Um, if we can start, uh, at least get the letter uh, once we purchase the home, uh, which we're hoping to do within a week or two. Uh, it, it all depends on this letter. Uh, then we will proceed with uh, with the rezoning. I mean, I used to sit where you guys were. I know a little bit. I don't know how much Rich does, but I, I think if it's possible we could ask a little assistance on the procedure and maybe what the costs are involved with it sure. because we want to work that part out. Okay, we can certainly do that. Okay. Can we have your name for the record, sir? Richard Groom, G-R-O-O-M-E. So it looks like there's three properties over there that are zoned business, correct? There is. There's two parcels that we own that are around the mill there. Yes. And then the third is the one back off of wood there. <coughs> but the parcels are empty parcels. Correct. Other than no, the, 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 the two the other mill. parcels are the property mill. around the mill. Correct. Yeah. But they don't have structures on them. Correct. Other than the mill, which is, yeah. So any problems since we had the same request said no before? It's not. It's already zoned, and it was. It's surrounded by residential, so mm -hmm. you're not. I mean, in this case, you're changing a zoning to match zoning. You're not spot zoning. In other words, you're not taking a, a parcel inside of a square in the middle and saying, "Now we're going to make that residential." When you got commercial all around it, mm -hmm. you have residential all around this. And except for the other two parcels. Except for the other two parcels, which I, I mean, I think should probably be rezoned at the same time. To be honest with you, mm -hmm. but I don't know who owns them, so. We do. Okay. So I tell you right now, I don't think. Well, I can talk to you more. I'm, I won't do it at the same time, but I'm right. certainly willing to talk about it. Okay. So maybe the village would be interested in buying that you have a windmill. <laughs> <laughs> There's the sales pitch. Yep. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> Was that G R O O M B as in boy? Uh, e. G R O O M as Mary. Okay. With the E on the end. E. Okay. Brad and Groom with the E. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Thanks. Well, uh, so I guess I was just trying to get a, a feeling from you know the board, and if the board is agreeable, you know we can go ahead and generate a letter so they can get their closing done, and then we'll get with them and you know help them get set up to get through the. Uh, the zoning process. I myself is I'm, I'm agreeable. No problem. That's fine. Is it something we work on with the attorney though? Yeah, we'll have to a signed letter of intent. No, exactly. Though. I don't yeah. think he's going to back out. No, 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 no. We'll, we'll have the attorney draft the letter. Yeah, we'll have the attorney draft the letter because of the zoning issue. I'm good with it. I give you a card or something. Yeah. He email that to me. Yeah, and definitely. You can get it to the lender and the real estate. Definitely. We'll talk to him tonight and. Yeah, I don't know which one's coming. We'll yeah, have to get it. fill them in and have them get it done as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Good luck. Welcome to Peter. Thank you, sir. <laughs> My work emails are on the front, and my okay. personal ones on the back. Okay, perfect. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're going to have a public comment at the, at the moment, so any discussion from the board? I just want to make a suggestion. Sure. That if we're giving him a letter of exemption, that should last in perpetuity until the other properties. If, the, if he's not going to change the other properties, you start chipping away at that. What if commercial piece comes in and, and wants to build in front of this guy's house? And then this guy has an issue with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or what if he wants to sell it down the road and you have the similar issue later? I'm just throwing out 
possibilities. You know, if I thought if they're going to do that whole piece, then that's one thing. But if if they're going to create that island now, right. you know, that's that's well, a and I, one. And I've had conversations, you know, with Paul, and he definitely he would prefer to get rid of that, mm -hmm. you know, property. And he's talked to me previously about the village, you know, possibly being interested just because of the mill. Uh, but I think we can I think we can talk to him, you know, about the zoning and. Well, yeah. Can the village? Can't we initiate the zoning, the rezoning? It doesn't have to be the property owner, does it? It well because we don't own it. Yes. No, the property owner has. The property owner yeah. has to request it. Yeah. But can't we rezone both of them at the same time? We could, but he has to agree because he owns the other property. He wants to sell his house. Yeah. I that was my concern is, is we're gonna we've got the mill. Then we get the one that's sandwiched in between, and then there's the one they're that, requesting. That's why I'm saying instead of just doing the rezoning, we'll give them a letter. <coughs> I, I don't. It's a, it's up to you guys, but I mean. Oh, I see what you're saying. We'll just give them a letter. It's in perpetuity anyway. So as long as he owns the house, we'll put it into the caveat. As long as he owns the house, and if he goes to sell it, then at that time we review the zoning situation, or the new owner has to get another letter. Sure, it stays. I mean, then we're in we're that fine. case, it would stay, and then it would. Yeah. It would leave the other property. Commercial. The way it is, you know. But can't we don't we want just to talk to Paul and say, can't we resolve? I mean, can't the village? He just doesn't want to spend any money. I know that's what he doesn't want to spend the process, right? No, I don't know. I, I'll, I will. I will, I will talk. talk. I will talk. It, I think it'd be better if we rezoned it Should residential. Let me see if he's still out there, right? Yeah, it might be more marketable too. Out there. Right. Potentially. Yeah, I know, but it's just, it's just a weird. Well, the crazy things that happen are there's a potential a guy goes in there and right. does a B2 business. Right. right. Oh, a B2 business. Yeah. Coming back around, it's just some of the trustees have questions. Just about the other person. <clears throat> if you want to come in, you can. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 The, the conversation came back around to the other parcel. Okay. The mill is not on. And the concern is if we go through the rezoning process of the one where the house is at, then we have a commercial, the B2, zoning on that other parcel. There's, yeah, there's a parcel to the east of the mill, mm -hmm. kind of a narrower one. Mm -hmm. Then there's another square behind it. Okay. I mean, I think our... They're two separate parts. Okay. I mean, I I prefer all those parcels be residential. And, I mean, I don't think the village, I don't think the planning and zoning would have a problem with with that. Um, but, I mean, what are your thoughts? I mean, what... I'm open to talking about it. I, don't, uh -huh. I mean, okay. I don't want to do it with what he's doing. Right. right. But, you know, I, I mean... Way, way back when my dad bought the Knick Cream property, and even way, 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 way back before that, he got the property around the mill's own business, mm -hmm. just hoping that if the mill ever took off, you know, maybe you put a gift shop there, or a rest, something. I mean, that was way, way back, pie in the sky. Right. And obviously, I don't see that happening. So, yeah, I mean, I. that's why he bought the Knick Cream property. Right. It was contiguous, and it was business owned. So. Because the other conversation after you walked out was maybe possibly just at this point in time issuing the letter and then just trying to make sure that we have a plan, I guess, is what is what the board was looking at. I mean, on the business side of it, I'm not sure what I w we would put there anyway. Right. <laughs> so... Well, the issue comes up that if a if, if family member or somebody decides to sell it, they can sell it commercial and we wouldn't be able to stop a business from going in there. Right. So that puts his property in jeopardy. And then we've got, we created that island that we wouldn't, didn't want to create again. So. Right. So the suggestion was that we give him the letter, let him do his closing, and then when you're ready, we can do them all at once. And then this way we, we're assured that that all comes in the same way. And I'd have to think about it a little bit. Right, but regardless, we're gonna regardless, we're going to give them the letter. Yeah, okay. And that way, you know, even if it stays B2, something happens, 
that house can be rebuilt. You know, you know, it's not like we're, I don't think we're opening Pandora's box there. But ultimately, you know, try to sit together and, and come up with a plan. Okay. <clears throat> so is the other property landlocked? Well, you could pull into it from the front of the mill. There used to be a driveway there. It's kind of grown over in grass. But in theory... He's got ingress and egress, right? There's not a road that goes yes. into There's a driveway. No, his, his house is fine. The one he's yeah. buying is fine. Yeah. Right? It's right. on the dead end of the right. street. I'm talking about the other property. The other property that's currently... It would be from the back. Yes. So the only access is through the mill. Through the yes, you'd have to drive basically through the grass to the east of the mill. And there used to be a driveway there mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah, that's weird. And we aren't opposed to buying that property, um, but we have no current plans to right. as of now. And I know Mr. Shin the next door has asked me about it a little bit. We haven't really gotten deep into it. Okay. But he just told me he would leave it the way it is because he doesn't want anything <coughs> next to him. So. Right. <laughs> and, and again, but I mean, it, that would make sense to rezone it sure. and just That's and be done. So what, what, what are your concerns about rezoning it together? I just haven't really thought much about it, I guess. I don't know. Because yeah, in our conversations about this piece of property, we didn't really talk about those. We were just trying to figure out, you know, trying to get the sale, you know, to move forward. Sure. But I understand, you know, completely what you're saying. I mean, it, it makes complete and total sense. And I think this is, by like, just giving the letter right now, let the sale go through, and then try to develop a plan. Okay. That's good. This way we're not holding you up. No, and, and no. I'm in no hurry to, to have it zoned as, as residential. We're not planning on any buildings, you know, right. any, there's no garage. Uh, that'd probably be the only building that we would do eventually. Uh, but that's yep. a little ways down the road, so. Okay. So that's the plan now. Yep. All right, but we'll get the letter sent to you. All right. Yep. And then we'll talk. Good. All right. I'm open. No, I know. I, just, I know. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Any other conversation topics? We're in general. Yeah. We're in general. Um, I talked to Bob on the way here, just so you know, Peter. Uh, he's meeting with Strubar out at the garage on Wednesday to try to get a plan together and okay. pricing for all that. And then I put in your yeah. ears in Mike's box. I just got it, so I haven't had a chance to figure it out. But uh, I figured if we can plant 10 or 12 of these, it'll still save us a little bit in case we got an emergency, you know, if something comes up. Okay. Did the my copy of the from Lenard, I both so, read? Did, yeah, that's the way read? mine is. Oh, I'll ask Bob if he's got a better one. Because I mean, if Lenarga sent, I know Bob requested the understory trees. Yeah, Lenarga, the little bit I've seen of it, looks like they sent everything. The yeah, they sent everything. So I got to go through here and figure out pricing on theirs. What's the lighting for? Like the all the electrical needs and lighting out of the, the new building, yeah, new public building. works garage. I mentioned to Bob the other day when I was talking with him when he talked to Strubar to have him give us a quote on mm -hmm. the lights in okay. here and upstairs too. You know, to see what it would take to. I put a call on Lisa, and right now they don't have anything in that area, but there's some. That's our combat rep. I had asked. I'd ask Greg to check with uh, them. But she's going to do some checking on some outside stuff for me and let me know. Okay. And they'll sponsor it. But I'd just like to get these these lights and the ones upstairs updated and kind of all the same. <laughs> so they don't flicker and make noises. 
<laughs> so are you going to then try to look at this list? That look at his list. Then, yeah, I'm so going to see if he's got a better one. Yeah, because I mean, some of these. I, I mean, I don't know what the sizes mean. You probably know better than I do, but I mean, it looks like the regular size trees are a pretty good price, but I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. What's the? Do you know what the CT number seven or what does that mean? Or number ten or or container? I don't know what that means. Oh yeah, I'm, I, I had to get there. Like on the American hornbeam. That's a ten pound. So it's it's a they're container trees. Oh, okay. They're grown in the pots. Okay. The B and B is bag and burlap. Okay. Anyway, so it's tree speak. I think we'll have some figured in figure it out. <laughs> trees, but I don't know where I, the yeah, we were so. talking yeah. about lights and uh, right. so I told them no, now they're talking about. Uh, they're going to they're gonna do some more trees oh. with the rest of the money budgeted this year. Some under understory trees. Yeah. So they're just trying to figure out how many they can where do and where they're going to plant them. And they're going to have a committee meeting to discuss that. Correct? Well, I don't know if we need to have a committee meeting. Okay. He's going to get together with Bob. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. Very good. <coughs> we'll talk. You'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> talk to Bob. I just before I forget, I'll mention it here and I'll mention it at the end of the regular meeting too. Um, we got a letter from the high school and we'll have it on our next agenda for formal action, uh, but just requesting uh, permission for their annual homecoming parade on Friday, October the 6th. Uh, parade lineup at 345 with the parade starting at 4 o'clock. And the parade route is the same as last year going from uh, the high school through The Hague to Corning to Conrad, to North, uh, to 2nd Street, to Main Street, back to West Street, to Garfield, and to the Junior High. So, but we'll have that for approval for the next agenda. Okay, that'll be agenda for the next year. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Just want to make a comment that the uh, building committee is going to be meeting this Wednesday at 5 p.m. to put to rest the shed and fence ordinances. Yeah. Very good. So you'll bring that back at the next board meeting? Yes. Okay. We'll just update the board on the uh, updating of the uh, building codes that had to go to Illinois. There's a 30 day review period that they have. We should be close to being done. We should be actually. close to being done. Yeah. But it is Illinois. So, yeah, uh, but uh, hopefully we get the review back from them, which is standard and there's really nothing for them to object to because we're just removing something. We're not adding anything new or changing anything that's union related. So uh, we have to, obviously we talked about taking off the sprinklers for residentials and things that, you know, of that nature. So uh, nothing, nothing of the major construction and stuff. So, so hopefully we get that back and we can get that on one of the agendas upcoming here. Speaking of buildings, um, somebody had a couple people uh, mention the uh, house on Corning um, right here on 3rd Street that's in disrepair. I met with her. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, after a long struggle with code to get something going there, we sent her seven tickets, got her attention. She came in, I sat with her. Last year, she said that they were going for a mortgage to redo the house, a second mortgage, and they got denied. Didn't bother to tell us, and uh, quite frankly, we didn't do any follow-up either. Uh, so I asked again about a month or so ago for him to go knock on the door and get a follow-up. Uh, no answer, no answer, no return phone calls, anything. So I had him issue tickets. Uh, the tickets brought her in the door. We're holding the tickets. Or we've actually, we forgave the tickets because she's going through the Farmer Farm Bureau. They're getting a loan, hopefully from them. And as I told her, without communication, we're gonna reissue the tickets. They're gonna be doubled because they're $100 tickets. They're gonna be doubled. And she's gonna have to pay them because we just can't go on like that anymore. I mean, the garage looks better than the house. 
and she agreed, but she's got a myriad of excuses and, and no money and... Is that the one in the southwest corner? Yeah. The one where the Tyvek is all falling off and the, yeah, so it's, it's a mess, it really is. And, you know, I told her, I, and I see him sitting out there now, so, you know, uh, it's a sad, sad situation. I don't know what we're going to do, I'll be honest with you. If she doesn't get the loan, I don't know if she can afford I said, we've got to start making some efforts. I mean, all the village is looking for is compliance. We're not looking to, you know, put her in a hard place, but we've got to get some compliance. I hate to see what it looks like inside, you know, so. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so we are we are on that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, how much leeway does the village, I mean, what kind of code violations? Well, I've had to probably find 100. Yeah. Yeah. And then our only, you know, our only recourse, because we're not home rules, we can start ticketing. And the court's either going to let us get the fines or not. If she can't pay the fines, we lien the property. And when we get enough liens on it, we could technically foreclose. But there's a mortgage on there now. Sure. So we're second. Right? Yeah, we're set, we're really in no position. Right. You know, we get the second position. So we'd have to. If we went to sheriff's sale on that, we'd have to outbid the mortgage to get it. You know, so yeah, it's it's a those are bad situations. Yeah. What about the Second Street building? Have we heard anything from them? Or well, I had talked to him today because he got a series of tickets. I finally I told Bud that he had to start writing some tickets there too because it looks like crap. Yeah, that's been going on. It's all our fault. That he couldn't sell the building. It's all our fault that he couldn't open because we were going to make him go up to code, <laughs> and he didn't want to go up to code. He just wanted to open, and the village doesn't want anybody to have a liquor license there. Which we've left three different licenses up at the front counter for people applications. To, applications to pick up, and he never picked his up. The second guy never picked his up. The third guy picked his up and called me and said, "I'm not spending that kind of money." <laughs> so it's not our fault. But I told him, I said, you got to do something with that board up. And I don't care if you reboard it, but paint it and make it look at least, you know, somewhat decent. It looks like crap down there. It looks like the south side of the city. So, do you know what the asking price is? Well, he told me 28 today, but I know the guy, the last guy that was in that I was working with, uh, who did pick up a license, was paying 38. Yeah, he told me 15, just to get rid of it. Yeah, so. And again, I had a conversation with him and his brother prior to them purchasing it. And we, and I believe you met with them too, yep. and explained to them exactly what needed to be done for that building to be safe enough, to you know, and safe enough to open. And they purchased it and anyway. Right. Yeah. So it wasn't like they went in blind. Yeah. <clears throat> As I mentioned to him, I said, Are you sure you went through that place? Really? I said, I, and well, he's and now he's claiming he really was. He was listening to his brother. He really wasn't paying attention. Well, it doesn't matter. You have to be pretty <laughs> doggone blind to stand in the middle of that place and not know you've got problems. Yeah. <laughs> but I, like I said, Tom and I couldn't stand in the same floor space together because we were afraid we were going to go through. And again, the old saying comes in: ignorance is no excuse. Well, that's just it. So, but he he finally called me back. I called him. Well, we talked the other day, and I've been calling him ever since. And I finally got a hold of him. So, uh, but he's not. I don't see a whole lot of cooperation there. So, how's that going to end? Uh, well, he's thinking about walking away from it, which I don't know what bank they use. But he did all the signing. The brother didn't have any credit, I guess. So he's good. It was it's him that's being affected. He has a handful of tickets as well, and I didn't offer to take his tickets away. I says you fix those boards and we'll sit down with the mayor and we'll talk about tickets. I'll be honest with you, I think there's got to be something there that keeps his interest, whether we go half or whatever. There's got to be some fine there that has to be paid because he's just ignored it for the longest time. He wants to blame the insurance company and, you know, again, every excuse in the book, but, you know. But none of it matters. No. No, and he says it costs too much to demolish the building because he'd tear it down and just leave us with a hole. And I was like, <laughs> I, I wanted to say that it would almost be better, but I didn't say it. Did so, he tell you what it would cost to demolish? He says 40000 I think that's probably on the top end. Uh, yeah. 
he told me 50. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's on the top. I think I have to like, just five people in the blower wheel. All right. <laughs> you could probably find somebody in town for half of that. You know. Oh, I half is not that. less than half of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then, you know, why the village wants a restaurant in there because they got a restaurant next door. I mean, this guy's just got no concept about, you know, what it is the village would like to accomplish there. It would almost be better just to demolish the building. So. He wants to know if there's any charity he can donate it to. <laughs> uh, is there a, do you know if there's a note on the building? We can look it up. I think there is. I think there's a small one on there. I don't think they paid cash for that building. Yeah. I, what, I, what I think is he did a line of credit and he just used a personal line of credit. So I, I, there may not be an actual mortgage on it. So. But is there anything we can lean against? I guess what I was going for. Yeah, we can lean against the building even if there is a mortgage. It's just collecting it. Right. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, we can lean. I mean, it just seems like we're not going to get his attention. No. He's not a resident, right? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's made a mistake, made a dumb move, but he's stuck with it, so he's got to. I yeah, I couldn't believe when they bought it, and I still can't. Well, he it. thought he was going to open up a video gambling, right? Yeah. That's what he thought he was doing. And so, I don't have a lot of sympathy for people that were going to do that, and then it doesn't work out for him. But he owns it now, so he's got it. Well, and it's so it's so cheap on the market, and of course, I had a realtor there. That's how this really all started. The realtor called and just ripped us a new one because you know the village. Have you looked at your downtown? And she just went off on me. And finally, I told her. I said, "Let me explain just a couple of things to you." First of all, there's no license available. Whatever kind of liquor license, there's none available. Whoever wants to buy the building needs to apply for a license ahead of time because if they don't get it, they're not going to buy the building, or at least I wouldn't. These guys assumed they were going to get a license. They didn't even fill out the application. There's nothing I can help them with if they don't at least do the groundwork. I said, second of all, I says, the board has to create a license. In order for them to do that, somebody's got to walk in with a plan. They can't just walk in there and say, yeah, everything's fine, we're going to leave it the way it is pour a little wine and beer and put some games in here. I mean, that's, you know, that's just not going to, and I says, and our gaming license spells it out what has to happen within it. I says, you're welcome to go online and take a look at it, or I'll have, I'd be happy to send you a copy. But this is not our fault that somebody got in over their head. So, I mean, I've, I don't know if any of you have been in there, but I've been in there, and i got to tell you, it's pretty damn scary. The upstairs is, it's, I was in there, and yeah, it's, it, hot. you got holes in the floor. You that's actually That's what I'm saying. You got you holes actually in the floor. You, they never so replaced any of the burned out wood that were from the fire that was up there. Yeah. And they store alcohol up there, and they store, oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that place is one good match from just going poof. You could almost say it's a safety hazard. I mean, almost condemn it. Well, and, and that goes back to our not being home rule. So we're going to spend, we'd spend more condemning it than it would be if we asked them just to give it to us and then taking it down. I'll be honest with you. Our lawyer fees on that would be huge. Because hmm. if they contested it, we'd be, we'd be in court for, you know, we don't have that kind of power as a non lawyer. So. He'd be spending legal fees too, though. He would, yeah. It'd be just our luck for him to go into court and tell the judge, I, I can't afford a lawyer and he'd get one pro bono. You know what I'm saying? So. Big Bad Village is being mean. Right. Yeah. On that similar subject, uh, the the barber shop that had expressed some interest in mm -hmm. coming. Any any? No, I thing talked to him a few weeks ago. He was still working on his plan. Okay, so. that's why I said as I haven't seen a plan or right. you know if you right. made any application. I no, there's been no application made at this point in time. Okay. We, talk, our, we did talk the other day though. Yeah, so since our game that gaming code then it does require a. Food? It requires food. It yeah. does. Okay. Yeah. 
his situation is more that bank that owns that Verizon building, I think, is looking for a little bit more. Than, I, I think they're being real optimistic on that. Yeah, I, I didn't think that was the best best spot for what he was trying to do, but uh, um, I think the idea has merit, but, you know, um, just like to see it continue to go forward if possible. Anybody else? I guess, uh, speaking of buildings, the old uh, Fuzzy Schrader Dodge is mm -hmm. looking great. Yep, yeah, the like, church has really done a lot of yeah. work in that building, and That's they're moving. They're really moving forward. It's been a lot of, a lot of time and energy over there. Yeah, it looks so, really good. Yeah, the outside is definitely coming around, and I know the inside. They've done a lot of work on the inside too. I haven't been in there yet, but it's definitely uh, better than it was for sure. <laughs> Much appreciated. Right. There's nothing else. I will entertain a motion to adjourn the Committee of the Whole. Motion. Second? Second. Motion by Trustee Bowden, seconded by Trustee Hack. Mr. Bowden? Yes. Mr. Hack? Yes. Mr. Ham? Yes. Mr. March? Yes. Mr. Hupke? Yes. Meeting is adjourned. We will reconvene at 7 o'clock for the regular village board meeting.